I'm sorry, Mike, what did you say? Do you have any way of hitting Bruno with an email at the same time? Well, I'm going to be conducting the meeting, Mike. Could you reach out to him and make sure that everything is copacetic? I'll try. All right, thank you. Well, welcome to the friendly Westwood Village Rotary Club. And as we all know, the, the, the theme for this year is Create Hope in the World. Our international president is Gordon R. McAnally from Scotland. I have had the pleasure of meeting him, a really a, a fine chap. Uh, moving on, um, I asked Gordon to read, recite the four-way test, but I don't think he's joined us yet. I Gordon, have. Yeah. Oh, there you are. Hi, buddy. How you doing? Could you the read four the four-way test? test? The yes. four-way test of things we think, say, or do. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Now you can see me. I'm sorry. I was eating lunch. Oh, uh, that's is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? And will it be beneficial to all concerned? Thank you, Gordon. Very good. Okay. And now uh, for today... Past President Chris Bradford, could you uh, recite the pledge for us? Please make sure to unmute yourself. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, please place your hand over your heart and repeat after me. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United, the United States, States of America, of America and to the, republic to the republic for which, for which it, stands. it stands. One nation under God indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chris. And our thought of the day is uh, past president Steve Shear. Good. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, oh, man. Oh, man. I'm joining you by my phone. For some reason, my, my computer is working. Can you hear me? We do, but it has an echo effect, Steve. I know. I know. It's getting any better. Yeah, actually, I think it is. Yes. Technology is a bummer, isn't it, Steve? For both Steves, it is, yes. Steve, we heard you. You can continue. Steve Sher, yeah, we heard you. We can we should all unmute and start laughing. That would be better. <laughs> anyway, um, Steve, can you hear us? Uh oh. Okay. Um, why don't you fell um, into the echo chamber? Yeah. Steve, we'll come back to the thought of the day. Let's let's go on with the um with the PowerPoint here. Okay, and today I uh thank uh past president Tom Barron, who is today's windmill editor or windmill writer. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. And again, thanks to Jim Crane for signing the windmill and the pledge and the thought of the day. Appreciate that very much. Okay, visiting guests and visiting Rotarians. Um, we do have a special guest today, a good friend of many of us in Rotary, in Westwood Village Rotary, and that's Sean McMillan, who's the president of West LA Homeless. Uh, as we all know, that's the agency we've been partner, partner, partnering with in our West LA cleanups. We had our fourth one this past weekend. So J Sean, welcome to, uh, West, to a meeting of the Westwood Village Rotarians. Uh, you know, I want to thank you for the invitation, and it's wonderful to see community in action and to see so many uh, friends that I have been able to get to see in action in the field, and I look forward to getting to know many others of you. But I have to say, opening with the tenets that you do and the philosophies that you share, it's a very uh, welcome space in my heart and mind. So thank you for having me here. Oh, you're very welcome, Sean. Oh, Steve's back. Steve? Steve Sherry, sure. would you like we, we didn't have a chance to hear the thought of the day. Should we try? Steve, you want to try this thought of the day? Steve. 
Steve, we can't hear you. Oh, well. All right, we'll see if we can come back to that later. Okay. Um, okay, uh, as I, as Sean and I both mentioned, this past Saturday, we had our fourth Westwood, West LA neighborhood cleanup. And honestly, it was another successful morning of great um, uh, fellowship and great results. Um, on the screen right now is, well, at least there, go back one, if you don't mind. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, this is uh, our own uh, fifth district uh, council person member, uh, Katie Yaroslavsky. She and a couple of her uh, of her staff came and joined us at the beginning of our cleanup our, in our orientation, shared with us some thoughts uh, about the homeless situation here in Los Angeles and specifically in, in her council district, and also thanked us for our service, for providing um, an invaluable service to our community. So it was really nice to have a chance to meet her and delightful individual, easy to talk to. And I know many of us um, look forward to her coming to our, all of us look forward to her coming to our club for a meeting um, in the future. I made that connection. I'm gonna be reaching out to one of her staff. So anyway, so that was Katie and Sean uh, and myself. Uh, just go ahead and click through it, TV, if you don't mind. Uh, that's just some pictures of, of us in, in process. You can see Chris Gaynor and Brian Whitney in the upper picture. And that's actually uh, Nicole Gaynor, Chris's daughter. In the lower left-hand picture, that's Brian Whitney's son. I forget whether that was Aiden or Reese, I think. That's to, his right, to the right is John, one of uh, Sean's good friends who was out there doing the cleanup. That's me in the in amidst all the bags. Uh, we're unloading the truck and dumping them into the big into the big bin. Um, okay, go on, Tia, if you don't mind. Yeah, just us out in the field. There's... Uh, Friend of mine, Steve, Steve Factor, and he, he he came. And farther back on the right, you can actually see Tom Tom Barron there. And the, and the truck is my wife, Marcia. As in the past, we use a truck to pick up the bags, and then we move we, we transport the bags over to the big the big bin dumpster. And you can see we just about filled this thing up. It was amazing how much trash we picked up in two and a half hours. There was twenty three of us out there that day. Of uh, Rotarians, there was nine Rotarians, and it was the uh, Rotarians. I'll just quickly read everyone's last name, hope you don't mind. Uh, starting with Tom, no, here we go. Barron, Crane, Day, Fisher, Gaynor, Hanson, O'Keefe, Rogo, and Whitney. I thank you very much, guys, for all coming out. And they all earned, as, as they all know, and you, everyone else will earn their t-shirts. And here are the t-shirts right here that I will be presenting to each one of them next Thursday. As I said earlier in the year, you earn your t-shirt when you do a service project. It doesn't have to be the cleanup. It could be some other service project during the year. And you then have the privilege of buying your t-shirt for $20. And that goes to our Westwood Village Rotary Foundation. So again, thank you. Um, continuing on here, Tia, please, if you don't mind. And then there's, oh, this actually was taken at the front end. And I like this picture because it also shows where we have our meetings, which at, is at the Salvation Army at the Westwood Transitional Village. And if this was in front of the uh, Bessie Pragerson Child Care Center. As most of us know there's two components to the Westwood Transitional Village, the, the housing units, the 40 housing units, as well as the Child Care Center. So anyway, and again, thanks to Pia and thanks to Diane for allowing us to start our cleanup projects from, from that facility. So there's 23 of us, as I mentioned, friends and family, Rotarians and Rotor actors. We had all, we only had two since they're out of school right now, but come our next cleanup, which we're hoping will be in uh, October, uh, we'll, we'll definitely have a big um, a, a big representation from our West, uh, UCLA Rotor Act. Okay, continue on. All right, uh, just the announcements of upcoming events. The first one is two weeks from today, we'll be at Hillel and we're going to be hosting or welcoming our district governor, Makiko Nakasone. I misspelled Nakasone there, I apologize. Don't let, don't let anyone tell her that, otherwise I'll be in trouble. Um, and, and again, the, the board will be meeting with her at 11.30, and then we'll have our regular lunch and she'll be our program, if you will, that day. Um, the next item is something just coming on, a, on, the, on, on, the, on the offing. And David, maybe you can share with us a little bit about this cleanup project that we found out about. And uh, David? Yeah, uh, so this is a, 
a an organization that uh, I found out about through Nancy. Uh, I, I'm Nancy. I don't remember exactly what your connection was, but uh, something you you sent in. And so I contacted uh, Gina Greblo, who is one of the leaders in a group called Volunteers Volunteer Cleaning Communities. Volunteers Cleaning Communities, and they started in the Valley Sherman Oaks area, and they're very active out that way. And about six months ago, Gina joined them and started uh, bringing their activities over to the west side, in particular, Westwood and Brentwood. <clears throat> and so they have uh, two main cleanups that they do on a fairly regular basis, at least once a month. Um, and that is the Westwood Boulevard stretch, where the um, all the shops are just west, uh, sorry, south of uh, Wilshire. And then the Brentwood area, I'm, I'm not as familiar exactly with the, the area there. And so um, they are very eager to work with us and see how we can expand activities. What they do is very similar to what we do with the homeless cleanups, except it's not specifically uh, homeless encampments. It's, it's just all the litter on the streets in general. Um, and so their cleanup on Saturday, August 5th is at 8 a.m. And they're inviting you know, anyone who wants to join to, to come join. They do have a sign up. Uh, I can send out the website where you can sign up. And I thought it would be good for at least a few of us to show up and get a feel for what they do and see if this is something that we want to get involved with more deeply. So that's that's really the intent here is is just kind of feel things out, make relationships, and see if it's something uh, we we want to partake in more regularly. Great, great day. Thank you very much. Um, I believe Taya, did we put up the flyer on them on here? Did we go, yeah. Here, here's actually their flyer. Look like a bunch of Rotarians, <laughs> don't they? Uh, it's interesting to look at the picture and see all how they basically approach it as well. So. Our next cleanup is is in October, so definitely we're gonna we're gonna coordinate with them to see if we can somehow work and as uh, get them involved with ours or theirs or whatever and get more more representation on the street. Um, so if I'm you're actually wondering if if uh, Sean, if you've had any interaction with them and if if you've come across them at all. No, I haven't, but I would love to uh, be able to collaborate and and. Uh and join forces in some of our efforts and maybe expand upon our ideas altogether. Right. Yeah. I'm curious to see how they approach it. You know, we, you know there's always best practices out there. Maybe there's, there's things that we can offer to them and vice versa. So anyway, you know, you know, it, it's just another opportunity for us to provide service in a community. So uh, follow up with David, let him know uh, if you're planning on attending this particular cleaning. Yeah. Okay, I'm moving on. There on August 5th and uh, welcome anybody else who wants to join. Great. Thank you, David. Um, Tay, go back if you don't mind one step. Thank you. Bruno, Bruno has responded that he'll be coming on. Oh, great. Thanks, Mike. And then on the uh, on the 5th, 12th is, I, uh, is that social activity Sunday afternoon? Excuse me. Excuse me. It should be Saturday, August 12th, not Sunday. Saturday, August 12th. Um, the, uh, I've heard from a few people that they wish to attend. S several people have mentioned that Unfortunately, they're, they got a conflict that day. And unfortunately, several Rotarians have not responded at all. Um, I've decided to postpone it. I would like a larger representation and, and considering that many people, I, and I say many, I'd say about 10 people said, yeah, I, I, you know, we go or we, we were unfortunately busy that day. So there's other shows this year, um, but every other month they're presenting a show. So we'll look to oct late October, maybe around Christmas time. For another show so i'm going to just postpone this right now because i i want to get everyone the opportunity to go visit um the the, the west westchester playhouse so we're going to put that on hold for now moving on uh district 5280 is breakfast is december 9th uh, excuse me august 19th at da vinci high school please go log on and sign up for it i'll be circling back on this but the important thing to note is this day is we're going to see don Ivan, verona for uh ruse Bays and rana's son presented with this Paul Harris, multiple Paul Harris pin, Paul Harris plus three. 27th is the, uh, is the annual district picnic down at the Seaside Lagoon in Redondo Beach. A couple of events to just kind of point to, uh, 
we're going to have a spouses event similar to what we've done in past years. And, and Shirley and Peter Moore have, have graciously opened their house to this. The date just to be determined. It could be in uh, early to mid, excuse me, early to mid September. That's kind of what um, we're starting to think about. More information is to come on that. And lastly, Chris and Rose Gaynor are going to host the Sip and See. That's my name for it, which is basically a, a nice time for us to get there and share fellowship and bring a bottle of wine and some appetizers. Uh, and, uh, and we're going to do it. Actually, the date's set now. It's Saturday, October 14th. And Chris and I were talking about the time. We think maybe five o'clock. Uh, that way, it'll, the sun will still be in the sky. and We can see the sea from Chris and Rose's patio. So that's it for announcements. Continuing on, Taya. Um, here's a new feature that actually Tom came up with the notion of having a Rotarian provide a, a movie review. And um, what I'm thinking is it doesn't necessarily have to be a review of a movie. It could be a TV show. A, um, it could be a, a performance. It could be a restaurant. It could be whatever. But I thought maybe as a way for us to kind of share some of the things we're experiencing uh, we can we can share a, a review of something. And so Tom has seen this movie that's out right now called Sound of Freedom. Um, you know, other than, uh, you know, Oppenheimer and Barbie, it's the it's the movie most people are 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 going to at this point. So, Tom, maybe a minute or two or three minutes talking about the movie. Give us your review. I can't hear you, Tom. Tom, you there? I am here, and I okay. will discuss this. Sorry about that. No worries. Um, as we all know, last year, Chris Gaynor's, one of his uh, passions was to bring us the, about the human trafficking issue. And uh, I, you know, we we heard it, and I, I remember uh, thinking this is an important issue, but I didn't realize the seriousness of it until I saw this movie, The Sound of Freedom. Um, uh, you know, after this film... So many of the films you see, they're superficial. And I saw Mission Impossible, and all it was was two big chases and a lot of action, things like that. But The Sound of Freedom leaves something important in your mind. It's a film itself. It's not a documentary. It's a story of a Homeland Security officer who uh, experiences the abduction of a boy and a girl. And it's a good plot, and it, and, and it made a real connection with me. Uh, it's well acted. Its main character is Jim Clavisio, and uh, the whole uh, acting uh, was was just terrific. And the story with the plot and subplots was very powerful, very powerful movie. Um, I saw the um, the sound leaves you thinking about it. Most, a lot of films you, you forget them, but this one leaves you with a memory of the human trafficking issue, and I I think it's frankly, the film of the year. I mean, it's that good. It's a very powerful movie. So I think everyone should see this. It's about the human trafficking issue, as we all know about. But um, the film itself is very worthwhile to go see and um, is very meaningful, very powerful. So that's my comment. Where was it showing, Tom? Where you have uh, it's showing actually the AMC theaters around here only mm -hmm. at night we went in Culver City because they had a 415 showing we could go out to dinner afterwards and things like mm -hmm. that so okay. that's where we saw it but um I think it's still playing in some of the AMC theaters around in the Westwood area things like that so right well, still, it, it outgrossed it had more tickets sold than Mission Impossible in the opening week it just and I understand why now mm-hmm yeah, it's number three uh, uh, after Bar this past weekend, Barbie and Oppenheimer. Yeah. Yeah. So thank you very much, Tom. And next week uh, or, or in the weeks to come, we'll schedule another review by a Rotarian. If you have an idea of what you want to share uh, a review of, let me know. And we'll put you on the calendar that week and or a week to come. And again, it could be a movie, a TV show, a musical performance, restaurant, whatever. So again, thanks again, Tom. Um, okay, moving on, uh, July 27th, you know what day that is, everyone, don't you? It's Scotch Day. <laughs> Whoa, ah, yowza, cheer. It's iced tea, just so you know, it's iced tea. Uh, events occurring on this day, 1054, Cyward, 
Earl of Northumbria invades Scotland and defeats Macbeth, King of Scotland, somewhere north of the Firth of Forth. And then on 1586, Sir Walter Raleigh brings the first tobacco to England from Virginia. And 1942, Warner Brothers released an animated short film, Wild Hair, and it's the first appearance of Bugs Bunny. Born on this date, uh, 1922, uh, Norman Lear, screenwriter and producer, New Haven, Connecticut. And of course, the show that he's probably most uh, tied to is All in the Family. 1948, Peggy Fleming, newest gold medalist. Women's figure skating. She was born in San Jose. And that was the 1968 Olympics, by the way. And 1975, all-star baseball player Alex Rodriguez, New York. Um, I can't say Hall of Famer because he was a, he used steroids. The guy hit 800, excuse me, 686 home runs. And honestly, I doubt he'll ever get in the Hall of Fame, along with several other players who also were users of steroids, such as like Manny Ramirez and Roger Clemens and and um, I forget. Anyway, there's other ones too. Uh, moving on to people who passed away this year. Um, oh, here we are. Um, 1946, our author and playwright Gertrude, Gertrude Stern, Stein, she passed away in 1946. Her life, her, her um, companion for life was Alice P. P, P Alice B. Toklas. And I'll ask the question of Ron Leister. What is an Alice B. Toklas? Ron? Still out there? I'm still out there. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's a, it's a pot-infused brownie. That was what they called it in the late 60s and 70s. If you want to go to have an Alice B. Toklas, it was a pot-infused brownie. Not that I, you know, I just knew that. <laughs> anyway... In 1919, or excuse me, 1980, uh, Mohammad Reza Pavlavi, who was a Shah of Iran, was born. 1980, he passed away. Uh, of course, the he was overthrown in 1979, and honestly, the reverberations of his being overthrown are felt to this day. And lastly, 2003, uh, he was. I don't think he was 900. I think he was actually 99. He didn't make it to his 100th birthday. Comedian Bob Hope was born, or excuse me, passed away. And interesting, his name was not Bob Hope. It was Leslie Towns Hope. So Bob, thanks for the memories. Anyway, moving on. Uh, Mike, is Bruno with us? Can I? Uh, yes, he's here. Oh, OK. Um, I'm sorry, Gordon, one second, Mike. Gordon has something he wants to say. Can I share something? I shared it with you earlier, but I think in the in the interest of full disclosure, I think I should share it. Okay, uh, I absolutely. It's, it's, it's imperative. It's imperative. Can I share my screen? Sure. Oh, it's up to. I can't do it. Uh, Pam, I totally support this. By the way, Gordon, I think it's extremely important and very appropriate. All right, Gordon, you can share your screen. Uh, you just muted yourself. I know. I'm just, I just let go of my space bar and trying to. Well, me. Oh, here it is. Here it is. You totally support it, but I can't. Oh, here it is. There it is. Okay, so now I share the screen. And this is little known fun fact about the Westwood Rotary Club. I discovered on the internet. Do I need to read it? <laughs> no, you just need to pay it. <laughs> Terry. Terry, write a check. I'll take it. I'll take it in 12 easy payments. They were not that easy. <laughs> I can't believe that's appears. It's not true. <laughs> well, you know, everything on the internet is true, right? Yeah. Guys, I'm I, I accept the low number. I'll take the low number. Don't worry about it. I'm easy going. And Gordon, okay. you get you do get your 30% um finder's fee. I get the 30% of whatever you get. How's that? That's right. That sounds fair. Fair <laughs> enough. Anyway, thank, thank you, Gordon, for thank sharing you. that. Thank you very much. 
Um, Mike, uh, let me pass it over to you so you can introduce our speaker today, Mike Newman. So uh, it gives me great pleasure to have Bruno de Sa Morea come with us. And Bruno was a student here in approximately 1993. When he arrived, he lived at my house for a month or more, and then we got him into a fraternity locally, and uh, that was where he spent the rest of the year. Um, at the time, he had a wonderful girlfriend named Lore, who he has married, um, and has twins, age 24, Henry and Guy, and a daughter, Inez, who's 22. And I can't introduce him uh, without also indicating that he... Uh, took my dad's car to Las Vegas, which we were very happy to give him. Unfortunately, the car never got home. And uh, he also took my bike. For oh, the that's year. Bruno. Okay. That's, and then uh, he also had my bike for the year, <laughs> left it at the fraternity house. I didn't get there till five o'clock to pick it up and it also didn't make it home. Uh, welcome Bruno, uh, it's all yours. Mike, thank you so much. I hope you guys can hear me correctly because I'm I'm in Dallas in DC. Uh, I'm I'm connect I'm having a flight later, so I'm so sorry for the poor condition of of me speaking. But that's the best I can do, and I hope it's not too bad the sound. Um, so I'm going to tell you the whole truth that uh, Mike is also uh, eager to hear about because there is pre prescription now, Mike. So it's been many years. And uh, so uh, anyway, uh, it's a great pleasure. I would like to thank the club, to thank the, the president and to thank Mike for inviting me to, to speak today. Um, it's something I have been willing to do uh, now that basically uh, it's been uh, quite a long time, as I said, about 30 years because I was a scholar thanks to uh, a, a Rotary Foundation Fellowship and I was a scholar in uh, um, UCLA Film School in uh, 1993. Uh, and uh, as as uh, Mike said, I did uh, I did arrive then, and I was uh, wonderfully welcomed by by Mike and uh, and by his uh, his uh, family then. And I lived in Westwood uh, um, a few weeks and. Um, and as, uh, as Mike told you, I then moved to uh, Kappa Sigma uh, Fraternity. So uh, it was a, a wonderful uh, uh, experience for me as a, as a young French to, um, and I'm trying to perhaps share my screen if that's possible so I could show some, some pics. Uh, um, do you think I could share my screen? Yes, you're good to go. Thank you very much. Yes, so um, I was, uh, I was, um, I was, uh, uh, oops, I was, <clears throat> I was in Kappa Sigma, and um, it's been an extraordinary time because I was the only uh, foreigner there. Uh, I still don't remember exactly how and why they accepted me for that year, uh, but uh, it's been an intense year of change with a. Uh, young uh, American students of many different schools. And um, one great quality of uh, Kappa Sigma then was to uh, allow me, uh, perhaps as a French, to uh, bring in my girlfriend. So uh, I was able to bring Laure uh, and, uh, and uh, she came and uh, stayed in LA. She went to a, a community college uh, uh, in Santa Monica, and uh, uh, we stayed there for uh, 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 a little less than a year, a school, a school year, I mean, and um, I was able to do some uh, short films and to learn about filmmaking, and uh, uh, and and uh, I would like to add that uh, I have a very uh, uh, a strong feeling of gratitude to uh, to uh, Mike Newman and his family because uh, they've been extremely supportive all that year. And in particular, something that uh, I will never forget, uh, Mike 
uh, 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 let me use this one thing that I'm going to share. And um, you can understand uh, 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 why it's it's been a uh, such a strong memory. So this is not the actual photo because I was not able to find one here in the airport. But uh, um, actually, I'll be able perhaps after the call, if you're if you're interested, I'll be able to do a little follow up by mail to uh, to your president with some links about what I'm going to show you. Um, because maybe we have some lag, maybe the, the, the quality of the call is not good enough. So I'm, I'll be following up with some links and I'll be sure to add some pics, some photos that I'm having at home. But here I'm going to basically show you this one, which is uh, found on Google. But that was the uh, great, great support from Mike's. I could use his mute Mustang. So it was exactly this color and, and this year, if I'm correct, Mike. Uh, and uh, so imagine me as a young student um, uh, with a fellowship driving a Mustang in LA. That was quite something. Um, then uh, to make it absolutely uh, 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 clear what happened in Vegas, uh, uh, Mike. Uh, well, in Vegas, uh, I went there, two of my sisters, I have five sisters, so two of my sisters did uh, visited me uh, when I was uh, uh, in UCLA, and they um, we had we went for a trip, and, and uh, again uh, Mike's family generosity and his father let me use an old Cadillac, and uh, Mike that was a small a small one and an old one to be fair. And uh, it was a great one because we could uh, basically be free to drive. And so um, we went there and uh, I just did one mistake, Mike. I let my sister drive. And uh, what happened is uh, <laughs> she got an accident in, on the strip at the red light. And, and the car was so badly damaged that uh, we, we had to leave it there at the garage. And uh, the guy was not able to fix it. And so I know you never believe the story, but that's that's a true story. I never played it, gambled it in any manner. I had my sister destroyed, basically. So, um, <laughs> but uh, again, thank you so much for everything you did that that year. So, um, maybe a, a few a few a few word about about me. Um, I, I, I came back from, from, from UCLA. I was uh, very excited by the, 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 the perspective of being in the film industry. I wanted to produce, I wanted to direct, I wanted to write scripts, I wanted to be involved in uh, film uh, adventures. And um, as things perhaps often happens, uh, never, it didn't go this way. So when I uh, uh, came back, I, I fell into publishing. Uh, it was not at all my plan, but uh, I was hired by a prestigious French publishing imprint, Flammarion. And they, they, they gave me the opportunity to uh, start from scratch some new department that was not existing yet. And that was willing to combine image and text and sound so it was not film, but it has to do with multimedia. And so I, 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 I accepted this uh, project and I started uh, to uh, produce uh, CD-ROMs and multimedia programs back then. And it was a, a great first experience. And um, actually that's, that's when I got married with Lore. We, we came back together from, uh, from, from LA and uh, we got engaged and then we got married and uh, started my, my, my professional career in publishing. Uh, but I stayed about 10 years in uh, publishing. And then uh, I um, created my own imprint. It was the name of that was Zero Hour. And I was, uh, I was uh, uh, basically trying to explore what we could do with online publishing. So I started to publish books online on, on my website and to sell them uh, digitally. So you could download my books. 
but this is back in 1997. So this was the very first worldwide online publishing house. Uh, and uh, I started also to uh, collaborate with existing book publishers and to say, well, you, you're not interested in a digital space. Um, please sell me the rights to uh, publish by myself the uh, digital version of your backlist and I'll do that and I'll pay you royalties and uh, and they, they they were interested a bunch of them and so uh, that's how I was able to uh, start to publish quite big uh, bestsellers in France um, and to start to publish them uh, um, online and that's how uh, basically I got spotted by an American uh, group uh, that uh, you may um, recall uh, because it's uh, based in California. And uh, that group uh, was uh, Gemstar TV Guide. And, and uh, they basically were very interested because they were going to launch the eBooks, the new eBooks. Of course, all this is history, but at that time, it was a very exciting news thing that you could read on the screen and so forth. We're talking years uh, way before the, I, the iPhone, way before the uh, Kindle, way before, um, you know, uh, the handheld devices. Uh, so this is the uh, Jurassic years of <laughs> film world. And so uh, basically, I sold my company to uh, Gemstar. I became an employee of the American uh, group and stayed there until to create uh, my own film production company and there we were at last um, hoping to um, be in the film industry again and uh, I mean not again but uh, at last uh, a little with some 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 money I I had from the previous uh, 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 previous time, so I I I I decided to to invest in this and started to write scripts by myself to produce again and to direct uh, short films. In my follow up email, I'll I'll put a link to one of them because uh, you you may find it quite fun. And um, and so um, I was there, but suddenly by chance or or you know, I got involved in a in a in a one shot project which was to um, reconstruct the vanished past of a French castle in Normandy called the Falaise Castle, which is the birthplace of William the Conqueror. And if you go there today, it's uh, completely uh, uh, impossible to imagine what it was back in the 11th century. So I did this project as a side project but uh, it turned out to be so successful that I did stop every uh, film project I had in mind. I, I created a new company called Historbury. This is back in uh, 2013, 10 years ago. And uh, <clears throat> this is what I'm doing today. And this is what I'm gonna share with you more about today uh, because this is my ongoing project. And you'll see that this project is bringing me, bringing me back to the US and uh, this is, uh, the reason why I'm in, in, in DC now, as I'm speaking to you. But um, before to go there, um, I'd like perhaps to uh, uh, share with you uh, uh, a little more about uh, my family situation today. Now we are talking present days. So let me introduce you, uh, my family. So I have one photo. Uh, I choose this photo because uh, we're good looking on this one. And uh, also because it's a great memory, great family memory. So uh, let me share this one. And um, I'll explain what's going on in this photo. Uh, this is a photo I took last, last year in Brazil. Uh, so you could see my wife, Law. And our three kids, so we have two boys, twins boys, they are 24, Henri and the guy, and uh, Ines is on the forefront. So um, why are we in Brazil? Because my, my father was Brazilian. I have a Brazilian name, so that's why, Mike, you have so much 
uh, so much trouble saying properly. So my name is Bruno de Samorera, and uh, and uh, we are there because Henri is going to do what I did when I was exactly his age. He's going to study in Brazil for one year to study architecture. Is the uh, fourth year of architecture. And um, Guy uh, is now studying his fifth year of medical school. And Ines is uh, studying his third year of uh, education. She wants to be a, she doesn't know if she wants to be a teacher or perhaps a school, a school direct director, something like that. She's interested in exploring new pedagogy such as Montessori and Steiner and so forth. She's willing to perhaps even uh, explore new pedagogy that would involve more wildlife, animal life in the classroom. And uh, she's going to go to Canada next year for an exchange program. Uh, so they all have an international mind. That's probably also one of the uh, great um, great uh, um, thing that happened to me thanks to you guys and thanks to Rotary uh, Generosity um, that becomes so part of our uh, vision of life and vision of the world that this is a global world and that we, we belong to it. Um, so um, I'm, I'm, I was willing to, to share with you that, that, uh, that peak so you, you know a little bit more about me. We live in Paris and, um, and of course all of you are most welcome to say hello whenever you stop by. It would be a pleasure to, to meet you personally and to uh, share more with you. So at, and at, at the same time, I, 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 you're most welcome to uh, interrupt me and ask me a question whenever. So I'm, I'm going to carry on. Uh, with uh, uh, telling you more about my professional project today. And um, in order to, to uh, do so, I, I, I will try to, to share with you guys a, a video clip. I'm not completely sure whether you're going to get the sound of this clip. So if you don't get the, the sound, please, please let me know. And... Um, Maybe the best thing will be to send you the link if you want to get back to it afterwards. Uh, because I'm, I'm putting this so that we can be more intimate uh, in this uh, public space I'm in now. And I'm not sure if the sound's going to play. So um, maybe I should start with a project that's been already twice in the US, which is alive and kicking. It's a project about Notre Dame de Paris, the cathedral. And uh, I'm doing there what I've been doing now for 10 years. I'm reconstructing the past and I'm letting the visitors explore by traveling back into time, uh, letting the visitors explore history and usually I do this in museums and in monuments. And they use my uh, service, which is called the Histopad. It's a tablet. And the tablet, you can now use the screen to basically use it as a window, as if you were looking at the past. So let me play the video. And if you have no sound, I'll be speaking on top of that, if you agree. So I'm starting the video. Let me know if it works. So do there's you guys no, have the... No there's sound. No, there's no sound. Okay, so I'm going to do the sound by myself. I'm so sorry for that. And I'm going to send the link afterwards uh, because you have some, some... But basically what people do here, they, they get their tablet at the entrance of the exhibition. The exhibition is about 5,000 square feet. It's not in the cathedral because the cathedral is closed for its ongoing repair, but it's, an, it's in a different location, downtown Paris, uh, which some of you may know. It's called, uh, it's, called, uh, um, it's called Le Collège des Bernardins. 
and it's uh, it's uh, it's uh, it's in Quartier Latin. It's a very old, very beautiful Gothic architecture building, and that's where we were for three months. It was, this was a temporary exhibition, and this exact same temporary exhibition has been already coming twice to the United States. It came to uh, Washington D.C. It was then in the National Building Museum here in D.C. And then it came to New Orleans, where it was in the historic New Orleans collection. And uh, so I'm showing you the Paris exhibition. So the Paris exhibition, you are taking your tablet at the entrance. And now you're moving in the exhibition space. And the space is looking like what you see, big visuals. And in front of them, you have like this gray cube, which is what we call time portals. And with the... With the, with the tablet, you are going to scan those time portals. And here we go back to 1241. This is the day when the King of France is bringing um, the Holy Crown of Christ back to Notre Dame de Paris. So the big visual is a photo of the facade today, but the visual on the screen of the tablet is Notre Dame in 1241. So you can see it was fully painted and you can explore in every direction in 360 degrees and you can click on the hotspots to learn many things. So, for instance, here you learn that the king was wearing this robe, and this 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 this, uh, this uh, dress is uh, exhibited in Notre Dame. It's part of the treasure of the cathedral. So that's how we can uh, work with museums by showing real artifacts from the museums back into their historical context. And um, now you can see more about the scene, learn who's there, what's going on. Uh, the king is gonna build the Saint Chapelle. So this is another moment. And here you can see that you can compare with the present day, exactly the same angle. You could compare past and present. So I'm, I'm trying to do this uh, for you, but uh, anytime, anywhere, you can always use the functionality to go back and forth with the present and compare. This is why fascinating for visitors because now they can compare what they have around themselves and what it was before. This is a different experience when you're the night of the uh, fire and you can go that night hour after hour to uh, see uh, uh, how the fire progressed and how the firemen did to stop it that night on an hour after hour basis. Um, very rapidly, we jump to another moment. You see this white thing. This is a plastic model I print in 3D using my 3D models. It's a, it's a model of the roof of the cathedral that has burnt. But when you scan, you have it fully alive and you can see the carpenters working on it on the tablet. And so basically you're bringing life back to this model and it's quite fun because you have a series of these and each time you can see life uh, what what was happening in the place. Um, we reproduced the city of Paris. We reconstruct the uh, working place of the cathedral at the very beginning. Uh, these are a bunch of images. There's a lot of content. It's very rich. I'm sorry you don't have the sound because it's um, quite amazing to uh, listen to what people say either in Paris or uh, in uh, in DC or anywhere in the world where we've been because we have been with this project already in Dubai. <clears throat> we have been um, in, uh, 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 we've been in the US as I, we've been in, in Germany twice, in Dresden, in Berlin. Uh, we have been in the US, as I said, we have been uh, in uh, uh, Dubai, we've been in China, in Shanghai. And this is just a, a part of the world tour we're doing with this exhibi exhibition project because we are uh, uh, basically going to go next year in another about another 10 countries such as um, Brazil, Mexico, Canada, Japan, Korea, Australia, uh, England, uh, uh, I'm forgetting some. So it's a world tour, and this is thanks to the uh, support of our patrons, including L'Oréal Group, French group, who is one of the major donors to the reconstruction. And this is the way to bring the cathedral 
uh, which is closed to the public today to bring it to its visitors again, uh, waiting for its reopening. And uh, uh, everywhere we have a very strong response from the audience uh, because they are uh, engaged into uh, discovering the whole story of the cathedral. Um, again, I'm sorry you don't have their voices because they are very strong testimonies, as you you can read, and uh, uh, um, and it's it's something we hope to bring back again in the U.S. It should come it should come to the West Coast as well. I I, I I'm working on this, so. Um, this is the project that we've done for uh, 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 Notre Dame and that's currently touring the world. And now I'd like to jump in another project that uh, we've been uh, uh, already bringing to the US and that will come to the US again next year. Uh, and it will come to the uh, National Museum of the uh, US Army um, here in Fort Belvoir near Washington, and uh, it's a uh, project uh, 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 about D-Day. And again, I doubt, I doubt you will have the sound. Uh, I don't think I can do something to, uh, make, to make the sound come to you, but... Uh, so, oops. Uh, so this is the uh, D-Day project. What's the project is to bring it to uh, to um, to the uh, U.S. Army National Museum because of next year, um, 80th anniversary of D-Day in 2024, and this project is about the uh, 82nd and 101st uh, Airborne Division that jumped on St. Mary Glise on the night of June 6, 1944. It's in partnership of the St. Mary Glise Airborne Museum. And the, 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 the film you're going to see is because I've done it five years ago in uh, Dayton, Ohio, for the 75th anniversary of D-Day at the National U.S. Air Force Museum that maybe some of, some of you may know, which is a, a terrific museum, uh, the biggest worldwide museum of military aviation. Um, and um, so there, that's, that's the project I'm playing to you. Uh, uh, I'm sorry you don't get the sound. I like the ability to see what it looked like in the past and then slide forward and see what it looks like today. It makes me feel like I'm transported back in time. It's pretty amazing technology. It's so interactive and anybody can do it. I've seen young kids and I've seen old people like me. So we're in good shape. So that's the uh, project for, um, let me see. Did 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 you get the sound on on this one or 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 it was you did? Okay, yes, wonderful. Yes. So I'm gonna stay like. Can you hear me correctly? Yes. Yes. Okay, so I'm gonna stay like that. Wonderful. <clears throat> so um, here, uh, uh, um, this project is back in 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 the U.S. next year, as I said, uh, and it's gonna be a. a 
it's basically a same concept of what we call augmented exhibition, where you understand the visitors get tablet, the histopad tablet at the entrance and do the visit of the exhibition, the tablet in the hand, so that you can interact with the exhibition <coughs> um, elements on display and uh, and 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 uh, basically revive history. And um, I'd like to share with you my my new project that I'm the most excited about because this is uh, something I hope to uh, uh, make happen. For uh, and by the way, I just to uh, switch uh, switch subjects. I do another family photo now, uh, and um, this is me with my sons uh, last year. Um, and I explain, I, I I make a very specific choice for you guys. I explain why. Partager, uh, c'est où là? There. Okay. Sorry. So. This is in Normandy, very near my home um, in Normandy because that's our second home. And uh, they're dressed like GIs because uh, we have a group of Korean actors coming home every year to um, replay the uh, liberation of our home who was liberated by the 22nd Infantry on August 8, 1944. There have been heavy combats and um, we honor the memory of one soldier who died that night and who is buried here in the American cemetery of saint jean uh, 20 minutes drives from home. Uh, we, we know about others, but they, they, they've been uh, uh, taken back home to the US, but, but, but this one is still there. So we uh, pay a little visit uh, with the group of reenactors. So you can see, um, how much we are into history and um, also how much uh, uh, this uh, Franco-American history is uh, also on a personal level, something close to us. So I'm back to- um... Bruno, Bruno, this is Steve. Uh, yes. Uh, as I think I mentioned, our meetings typically end at 1.30, but this is so fascinating. Um, if you can continue, I'll formally end the meeting and uh, and for those who need to leave um, for their uh, other commitments of the morning or of the afternoon, please do. Um, we're back next week, everyone at Hillel at UCLA. So we'll all see you, everyone back at Hillel at UCLA for an in-person meeting. And so formally the meeting now is adjourned, but Bruno, if you wanna continue for another five, 10 minutes, um, everyone yeah. can stay on. I want, That'd to be great. The, I want to show you the American Revolution project I'm working for 2026. Perfect. So I'm Let's happy please to do carry that. on, and I'm happy sure. to put in my e follow-up email for those who can't see that. Okay. Uh, so basically, <laughs> talking about a new augmented exhibition to uh, tell the history of the U.S. between uh, 1769 and 1789, those 20 years that uh, shaped the creation of the U.S. So it's not only the Revolutionary War, it's all this moment of creation of the nation with the the politics going on, the uh, constitution, uh, the creation of the institution. So we start with the uh, British colony lifestyle in uh, in 1769, and we finish with the pledge of George Washington in uh, in New York in 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 Federal Hall in 89. So um, this this project is to um, the project is to bring this augmented exhibition to the U.S. so that it will travel in uh, each and every state. In, in the 50 states, hopefully, and people could then uh, travel back in time and uh, experience the uh, history uh, that we have been, uh, we are working on now with a group of experts. And I'd like to say this is an American project, not a French project. So I'm gathering only with American historians and experts to uh, put together this uh, huge work of reconstruction and I'm going to show you a little clip, which is not uh, the actual exhibition, because you understand this is a project. This is what, what I'm working for. And so it's a 3D uh, simulation of what it could be. And uh, I'm going to play this. It's a one, two minute simulation. And then we'll be done for today, I guess. 
but uh, hopefully that uh, that's self-explanatory. I'll be I'll be speaking on top of it with no no sound. So there we go. So this is the floor plan. Uh, as you can see, this is the uh, Unite or Die printed uh, by the Franklin Press, which helped the rebels when they were not yet patriots, but rebels recognize themselves. And um, you arrive at the entrance. So this project is about 5,000 square feet, but it can adapt to any size between uh, 2,500 square feet to uh, 10,000 square feet. The difference would be how many visitors you can accept, but the content would be the same. And you're gonna be able to uh, scan 20 time portals and each one of them is gonna drive you to one moment in history. So the first one is here, Williamsburg, Colonial Williamsburg. So when I scan the star shaped time portal, I go back to a, a reconstruction of the life then in uh, in, in Williamsburg and I can, I can uh, uh, um, understand what's at stake with the taxes, the uh, uh, start the, the, the movement of, of rebellion that start there uh, uh, and, and early discussions. But then we will make 20 stops. I'm not gonna describe all of them. I'm gonna describe in particular one, uh, but of course we'll go to many key locations such as uh, uh, Lexington, Concord, Philadelphia, uh, et New York and so forth. I'm gonna stop here at this turn turn key moment, uh, the turn point, this turn point, we are on December 25, 1776, and uh, Washington is crossing the Delaware that night with 2,500 men and about 18 pieces of artillery. Um, he has a few days to uh, change course of uh, what has been a, 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 a series of defeats and is against the biggest army of the uh, superpower of that time, the United Kingdom. And uh, since the declaration of independence on July 4, it's only defeats. And he knows he has a few days to stop this because people are starving. He has no money to pay them. Um, it's the morale is so bad. So he decided that night to do a coup to, to cross the Delaware and to attack by surprise Trenton on the other side and to um, basically surprise the uh, the army the army there that was mainly german mercenaries asians and he's going to do that so we have done a prototype and you're going to see some of pictures of the prototype now and this is something i'll show you whenever we get a chance to meet uh, physically of this reconstruction and uh, this is the tablet and you can see the uh, knight and this is the actual place today. And this is the place today. So of course, today there's a bridge, but in these days there was no bridge. So you're gonna see how it did cross. So it, it did not cross with the boat. You can see on the painting, on the painting, everything is false. The boat, the uniform, the, the flag, everything is a artistic point of view. The real thing is what you see on the tablet screen. It was on a ferry. Uh, it could be with his horse, with a cannon and so forth, and the cable would drive the ferry the other side, but there were some boats for the army with him, and that's what we show in the scene. But basically, besides this prototype, of course, we'll go to Valley Forge, we'll go, uh, uh, we'll go to France to sign the Treaty of Alliance to the south, to the west, and we finish with Yorktown and with the Pledge of uh, Washington, and we finish with a, a message which is, 250 years of democracy and it works. The same constitution, the same institutions. And that's why it's so precious because it's been bringing freedom and uh, prosperity to uh, the nation. And that's why it should carry on. So that's the project I'm working on for 2026. I'm currently in the pre-prediction phase looking for, for sponsors. And I'm in parallel starting to look for museums that want to uh, welcome this project. And I'm very happy to uh, share with you uh, on a confidential level that I had uh, two important meetings yesterday here in DC that went extremely well. And I can feel a lot of attention for this project and a lot of the 
a lot of uh, interest and I know that uh, it's going to probably go to a, quite a numerous number of uh, museums in the US in 26. Thank you, gentlemen. That's my presentation today. Thank you for inviting me. I did pick up the most American part of my life, but I want to conclude this by saying thank you. Thank you to the Rotary. Thank you to uh, Mike Newman's and Mike Newman's family. Thank you to the Rotary, the great Westwood Club. And I wish to have another chance to uh, meet with you guys. Well, thank you. Thank you, Bruno. That was an excellent presentation. And as a history buff myself, I'm so intrigued by it. And I'm looking forward to the opportunity to view whether it be uh, the uh, Notre Dame or the um, Normandy or the U.S. Revolution. Um, it's Re Revolutionary War. It's going to be fascinating. And so great to see a rot Rotary scholar in his career and how successful you've been and but also appreciative of all that you know you, you were able to get from our, your experience for a year here in Los Angeles as part of a Rotary Scholarship program. So again thank you. Uh, you, thank you. As you mentioned as you mentioned Bruno you're going to be sharing with us the links so um, we'll send those around to the members so that they can go on and get a Better, better flavor when they use the, the bandwidth that they have on their own personal computers. Yes, exactly. And feel free to ask me any question in the follow-ups, any one of you. If there is something that is intriguing you, I'll be happy to answer. Thank you very much, Mike. No, I was, I was going to ask you to explain how he was going to distribute that, but you just did it. Okay, very good. So, uh, Bruno, thank you again. Um, I have a gift for you. We'll have to figure out how to get that to you. I'll do that offline. No, no gift for me. The gift was 30 years ago. It's done. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. And thank you. And thank you very much. Thank you um, to you too. Thanks, Bruno. Yes, yes. And uh, we look for a follow-up in the in, in the months and maybe in the next year or so. Find out where, where we're going to see this. Um, so next week, we I do have uh, Alan Dias. He's with Air Care Alliance, and he's a member of of the International Fellowship of Flying Rotarians, very good friend of Peter Moore. We will be at Hillel at UCLA. And I always end with a quote, and today it's from the author uh, Gertrude Stein, who said, silent, grad uh, silent gratitude isn't much use to anyone. And with that, we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. See you next week. <laughs>